Hello class and welcome back to the last class in this series where we deploy our application and have it live on the internet. So I might have misled you in the last class by saying that we're going to deploy both the front end and the back end on Heroku. We're not going to do that. We're going to deploy the back end on Heroku and the front end on Netlify, which is something that I've used on this channel before and I've used for personal projects before. It's, it's pretty cool. It's really easy to start with. You just log in with your GitHub and literally like two clicks and you deploy your front end app. And um, in terms of the back backend, we're going to use Heroku, like I said. Uh, it's really easy as well to get started with. I'm not sure if it's, uh, to be honest, if it's something that people use a lot in production. Personally, I would use something like AWS or um, even Google Cloud or what is known as Firebase. Uh, but I don't know, maybe they have some good pricing. You can check that out for yourself. But for us, we're just prototyping. Just, you know, it's a hobby. It's a project of passion, I should say. All right, so let's actually get cracking. Okay, first things first, I noticed that there are certain things that need to be fixed about our, in our code base. First is, I noticed that in the package JSON here on the server, there are certain um, dependencies that are for the client. So we need to move these to the client. So I'm going to do here on the, um, on this, not on the server level, I'm going to say npm uninstall um, react router dom semantic UI CSS and semantic UI, oops, semantic UI react. So we need to move these, can I copy from here? Yeah, I can copy from here. Okay, so we need to move this into the client. So we're going to say cd client and say npm install and uh, paste that in. And that should be fixed. So one other thing. So in the index, I noticed here when we connect to the database, uh, we don't handle, like we don't catch uh, an exception or an error. If it happens, that's not good because... Um, you know, this can actually crash your server and your app wouldn't even run at all. So here we're going to say, we're just going to say console.error, the error. Uh, this is not going to change a lot, but we catch the uh, the error if it happens. 16,000 vulnerabilities. This, this NPM audit is getting out of hand. Anyway, I'm going to ignore this vulnerabilities thing for now. Um, one more thing I want to change is the uh, port. So where's the port? Uh, right here. So it says 5000, it's a static port, but uh, in actual environments, deployment environments, we could have like an environment variable that holds the port and we might need to use that instead. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say here const port equals, oops, I'm going to take the environment variable. So we're going to say process dot env, and this is how you um, access environment variables uh, dot port like this, um, or so where's the or right here, the pipe thing, or 5,000, meaning if this is null, we're going to get 5,000. And here, instead of 5,000, we're just going to say port. All right, so that's fixed. Um, I think we're done with fixing stuff. All right, so one thing that I'm going to do, we can actually deploy both of them um, like in one code base, like the front end and the back end. But I've found certain problems that happen on Netlify where if you have like a subdirectory that contains the actual app, there are certain shenanigans that we could avoid by just separating the client and the server to their own repositories. I mean, it's better for separation of concerns anyways. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my desktop. So I'm going to CD twice and I'm going to create two files or folders rather, directories. So make the, I'm going to say merg client and merg server. Cool. So we have those repositories. Uh, let's go to our desktop. Actually, I'm going to open this uh, folder. So here I'm just, I'm going to need the stuff for the server. So let's select everything except for client and node modules. Uh, copy that. And then in the server, um, yeah, in the merg server here, I'm going to paste them. And the client stuff, everything except the node modules and paste the client stuff here. Oops, uh, paste. Cool, so we got the client stuff here and the server stuff here. All right, let's create, let's start with the server. Let's create a repository for this um, on GitHub. So, oops, not here. Let's go to GitHub. And here I'm gonna create a new repository. 
I can make it public or private, doesn't make a difference. So here I'm gonna call it merng. Actually, I'm gonna prefix it with classed. I'll probably delete this because it's not that uh, important. People won't need this. So I'm gonna say merng server and I'm just gonna create the repo. Here I'm gonna copy this, I'll copy the SSH one. It's the same, but I think to push you can't do the uh, the HTTPS one. So here I'm gonna open up um, git bash in the server directory. I'm gonna initialize the git repo, actually git init. And here I'll say git add everything, git commit. Oops, if I can type. All right, so git commit, I'm gonna say, oops, just init. I'm gonna now add the remote. So I'm gonna say get remote add origin. And I'm gonna need to paste that origin. So here we're gonna double check, say get remote dash V. There we go, that origin is added. So we just now need to push the code. So we're gonna say get push origin master. All right, so that's done. So if we go here, we refresh, we see that our code is here. All right, let's do the same for the client and then deploy both of them. So let's create another repo. So here we'll say classed. Obviously you're gonna say something other than classed. If you wanna say, you can say that, I don't mind. All right, so here classed, man, client, create repo. Let's do the same thing, grab this, copy it, and then go to the client, uh, open the terminal. And here we need to say git uh, init. I don't know why I'm adding that flag n. And here I'm gonna say git add everything, git commit, and I'm just gonna say init. And here we're gonna say git remote, add origin. And because I don't have this button, this like the insert button on my keyboard, I have to like right click and put paste. Here we're gonna say git push origin master, and the same thing will happen to this repo. If we refresh, we get our client, wait, we don't, we do? We do, <laughs> we get our client code here. Cool, all right, let's deploy our server code now. So if we go to Heroku, actually let's create an account. So sign up, I've already done this, but I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'm gonna put my name, I'm gonna put my email, my class email. So class at gmail.com, company name, not applicable, professional developer, United Kingdom, I'm gonna, this doesn't matter, it's just for their data collection stuff. I'm just gonna say Node.js there, create free account, and I'm gonna now go in, in a side window and activate my account. Uh, Gmail. There we go, it says create new password, I'm gonna create a new password. Sweet, click here to proceed. All right, so now that we've set up with an account, um, let's go back here. Uh, I wanna go to the documentation. So documentation, uh, first of all, we need to install the CLI. Actually, let's go to Node. And here, getting started with uh, on Heroku with Node. So here, introduction, setup. We need to install the Heroku CLI. So if you're on a Mac, you just run this brew command. If you're on a Linux, you run this sudo install. But if you're on a Windows, like I am, you just download this um, installer. So I'm gonna uh, install it now. Yes, um, next, next. And it's really simple. You just install the CLI and then you do this Heroku login and uh, it just opens up a, a browser window where you confirm your authorization and then that's it, you're logged in. All right, I'm gonna wait for it to install. All right, so that's done. Close it, and I'm gonna close all this stuff here. I'm gonna open Bash. So here, I'm gonna say Heroku login. Press any key to open the browser. All right, login. You are now logged in. I should be logged in now. Uh, how do I check actually? Well, I think there's like a command to check, but I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna assume we're logged in. Yeah, there, it says I'm logged in. Cool, so stop that. 
and now we need to get our app started now our app is already started we have the app so I'm gonna browse into it so CD desktop and I believe it's Merng server yeah Merng server all right so this is our app now we need to push this to Heroku so we go to deploy the app so we're gonna say Heroku create which creates an app now there's a lot of options that you can uh, adjust here to change the name of the app and a bunch of other stuff but I'm just gonna go with the most basic uh, deployment right now so in that repo here in the server we're gonna say Heroku create boom so that's done and now we're gonna say get push Heroku master so now that everything is pushed okay so that's done now um, let's go check our app where do we go actually uh, <laughs> apps where's apps or maybe in the command so here it says that this is the app so this is the endpoint for the app uh, let's paste that oh it says error Chev logs. So I'm just gonna run Heroku logs. Oh, okay. Now I know why. Because the npm start is using a dependency, like a developer dependency. I should have fixed that, which is Nodemon, and instead it should just use the Node index instead of Nodemon. That's not available during production. So I'm just gonna change this to Node index and push this and hopefully that will fix it or actually I should change it in the other in the other repo or in the other code base so let me open this and here I'm gonna go to the package JSON and change this uh, start to just node index now let's open the terminal get add everything get commit and here I'll say fixed start script here I'll push to origin master Actually, I need to push to Heroku master as well. So git push Heroku master. All right, so it's deploying that again. All right, so let's check out our app. Uh, actually, it's still deploying. <laughs> it's going to give us the, um, the base URL in a second. There we go. So let's click this, control click this, just open link we'll wait for it now obviously the performance on an actual paid account will be better than this you're not gonna have to wait this much this is just a test account it's just a free account it's not charging us anything yet okay so that failed again and i checked the logs again and uh, i made a boo-boo and it's uh, right here so what is it so process existed because where's the error yeah it's right here process failed to point to port because uh, actually Apparently, port has to be um, all uppercase. So let's go here. N let's make another change. This could have been way smoother. Um, so right here in the index.js. So it's here. Port is all caps, like that. Sorry about this, guys, but in real, um, in real production, things like this happen all the time, so maybe not cutting them is actually giving you a better um, a better like view of how things work in the real world so here I'm just I'm not even gonna push to um, to github I'm just gonna push to Heroku master so now it's gonna deploy again hopefully this time it works <laughs> all right so let's control click this uh, base URL and I guess third time is the charm all right, so we get get query missing, but I believe this is just a like a because um, this is just our GraphQL server. I believe it's working. So if we go to Postman, let's open a new tab, and here let's send a request to this. And as you remember, GraphQL stuff is always a post request. So let's go to the body. We can use this GraphQL um, uh, type of like body here. And here let's actually send like a get posts query. I'm just gonna get the body and the created at and start that query sweet we get 200 and we actually get all of our data so our server has been successfully deployed let's actually now uh, deploy the client side of this 
All right, so I'm gonna close this, close this, and let's go to, so here, oh, OBS, go away. So in the client, so let's open this. Now, uh, I'm gonna make a couple of changes here as well. So in the package JSON, uh, down, down here, I'm gonna add something called a proxy, because this is not on the same server, like uh, as the actual server. So I'm gonna, this is, Actually not super necessary, but I'm gonna add it anyway. So the proxy will be the base URL of our app. So here I'm just gonna copy that and go back and put here, paste that. And we're gonna change something else. So inside of our Apollo provider, the base URI for our um, API is that deployed app. So we're gonna paste that here as well. So let's push these changes. So I'm gonna open the terminal, say git add, get commit and edited proxy and server base URL. Let's push this. Wait, have I added the Heroku here? Actually, no, there is no Heroku. What am I saying? <laughs> All right, so let's go to Netlify. And here you can sign up or log in. I'm going to log in with my GitHub account. I already have like an app here deployed and here I'm gonna deploy another one. So I'll say new site from Git and click GitHub here. And it's gonna now authorize my GitHub account or GitHub authorize Netlify to access my repos. So I believe I named it classed mang client. Yes, it's this one and we need the master branch and yeah we need to run actually this is all correct because the uh, eventually when you build the app it's going to be in the build directory um, not in public actually so here we'll just say deploy site um, this will take some time you can click here to see what's actually happening behind the scenes in the deployment it's just going to install all the dependencies and uh, build the app and then serve it from that directory that was specified, which is the build directory. So I'm just going to wait for this to finish and then carry on. Sweet. So that's deployed successfully. That's indicating by the indicated by the green color. And we open our app and there we go. So we get all of our content that's being served from our server and from our database and uh, we get the app and it's fully functional. So if we can actually log in here. If I haven't changed this password, yeah, it's one through six. Cool, so we can log in, we can post stuff. It's working exactly like it worked on our machine, guys. So yeah, so this video has been a bit rocky, has been a bit a bit of like errors. I could have cut all this these errors, but uh, yeah, this these things happen in the real world. So yeah, maybe it's better that I left them. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. This series has been exciting. It's been, uh, sorry for the delay for the last video. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope, you, I hope you've learned a lot. Uh, please let me know in the comment sections, any suggestions, anything you want to learn or anything you want to uh, dig into. I'll uh, happily make a video about it. All right. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.